Studio One is an extremely powerful but still highly underrated DAW. As someone who's been using this software to make music over 10 years, today I want to share with you what I believe to be Studio One's most powerful feature and one that you should use if you want to make the most out of the software. So the feature in question is the macro ecosystem. And if you're a regular viewer of this channel, then this should be no surprise because I talk about macros extensively. But even if you already know what they are, stay tuned because I have a free gift for everyone today. For those who are unfamiliar though, macros are basically a sequence of events that can be triggered simultaneously to help you do difficult or repetitive tasks much easier by grouping those tasks together. So for example, if you often bounce pieces of audio, normalize them and then set the peak levels to say negative three dB, instead of doing all those three tasks separately, you instead could combine them into one macro and then do that entire sequence in one button click. Macros can be extremely helpful, and luckily for us, Studio One has a really robust macro ecosystem that I believe once you understand and master, can help you become more efficient and get more done. Creating macros can be a bit daunting if you are new. So then to say thank you for being a viewer of this channel, I have put together a free macro toolbar for Studio One, which I am now calling the Productivity Toolbar, to hopefully kickstart your year off right and help you make more music in this awesome software. Let's take a look. Okay, so here in front of me, I have the productivity toolbar. Now, unlike my other toolbar, the Beatmakers toolbar, this one is not meant to be used in the piano roll. Instead, it is meant to be used on the timeline. And the reason for this is because a lot of the functions and commands that I've included are meant to be used to manipulate and edit audio events, MIDI events, and just basically anything that would happen on this main canvas. But okay, if we take a closer look, you can see that the toolbar is divided into a couple of different sections, including audio, tracks, events, effects, miscellaneous, and then export. Looking at the first section here under audio, we have a couple of different commands. The first one is pretty self-explanatory. It basically just reverses the audio. So here I have a bit of a sound bite from the last project that I just produced called Project 4320, and it sounds like this. Project 4320. So hitting the reverse button would naturally just reverse the audio. The next button here is called reverse reverb and it basically applies a reverse reverb effect to any audio track in one button click. So if I were to do that to the same audio clip, this is what we get. Project 4320. Now when it comes to reverse reverbs, here's a little pro tip for you to make it sound a little bit more natural. What I would do is I would duplicate the original audio first. Go ahead and create a new track, let's place it down here for now. On the on the first one, go ahead and do the reverse reverb effect. From there, take the second one, line it up. So it should be about right there. Then cut off the second half of the affected version, bring this back up, little crossfade, and now we get this. Project 4320. Now, a lot of times in Studio One, you're going to find yourself in situations where you're going to want to merge together or bounce pieces of audio that you have cut up or affected in some sort of way. Well, if you take a look at this little button here called Bounce, this is exactly what it does. If I select all of these two pieces and then hit the Bounce button, it basically merges them into one audio event. Now, if we head back one macro button here, we have one called Gain Stage to Negative 3, and this is a good way to create headroom in your mix really, really quickly because what it basically does is it takes any selected audio pieces, it normalizes the audio, and then sets the loudest peak to negative 3 dB. So I can easily take this audio piece that I just bounced, hit this little macro button here, and it basically sets that loudest peak to negative three decibels. Now this right here sounds great, but if you notice before, we have a bit of reverb on the beginning end of this clip, the tail leading up to the actual dialogue. And then once we get to the dialogue, it's a little bit dry. So let's go ahead and add a, a little bit of reverb here. I'm gonna go over this area extensively in a bit, but let me go ahead and add a bit of a room reverb to this track, let me lower this down, and let's see what this sounds like. Project 4320. Sounds good to me. So now let's say that I wanted to render any effects that I added to a piece of audio, meaning that I wanted those effects, those plugins to be baked in to the audio file that I have. Well, that is what this last button on this audio section does. On this track, with this audio piece, I've added a Valhalla Room, which is a reverb, and if I wanted to bake that in, all I basically have to do is select this here, hit render audio, um, all that looks good to me, hit okay, and now 
it's going to do some processing. And once it's done, that reverb is going to be baked into the audio piece. So as you, if you look here on the track, the Valhalla room is gone, but that reverb is now baked into my audio. Project 4320. This render audio macro here is great whenever you're ready to commit plugins to audio and in the process also help save some CPU. All right, moving on, the next section here is called tracks. And here we have four different buttons with two being drop down menus. Now, the first drop down menu is called conversion. And here we have two options MIDI to audio and then back to MIDI. Now, a lot of times in Studio One, you might find yourself in a situation where you might be using a virtual instrument that takes up a lot of CPU power. Now, ideally, in those situations, you would want to convert that to audio to keep the performance that you did, but turn off the VST so you save yourself some CPU. Well, the good news is that Studio One has fantastic features for this. So here I have a basic chord that I programmed in Scalar. This could work with any VST, but if I go ahead and I click on this track here, the Scalar track, then go to conversion, MIDI to audio. It'll give me a couple of different effects. Here, I can choose to render the plugins if you want, or you can uncheck that to leave the plugins for further manipulation later. You can preserve the instrument track state. Yes, you wanna do that. And then remove the instrument, you also want to do that. So these two are important because this basically turns off the VST, so you save CPU power. And then this one allows you the ability to transform back to an instrument track for further manipulation later on. It's really cool. So once you have this set, this is usually how I leave mine. Hit OK. Studio One will then do some processing. And as you can see here, this is now an audio wave with the same chord that I programmed. But if you look here, we still have that MIDI audio in the background. And if at any moment you ever wanted to go back and edit this chord from here, again, just click on this, click on the track, conversion back to MIDI and you're back where you started. Now, the only thing to remember with these two macros is that this back to MIDI macro at the bottom does not work by itself, meaning that you could not just take a simple audio you know, performance or piece that you dragged in from somewhere else and then turn that to MIDI. This one works only if you have used this one first, because essentially it is taking something that you've converted to audio and then turning it back to MIDI. Okay, the next drop-down menu here is called Remove, and this one's pretty self-explanatory. Here we have Remove Audio Tracks, VST tracks, and then VST and audio tracks. Now this loop track here is an audio track, so if I wanted to remove that, super simple, simply go over to remove and hit audio tracks, and it's out of there. Now when it comes to removing VSTs in Studio One, if you've been using it for a while, you might've noticed that if you right click on any track for a VST instrument, you're going to see this remove track and remove track option, and you might've been a little confused. If you were like me in the beginning, you might've even been thinking that you, if you hit remove track, that VST would have been gone, right? Because at the end of the day, the track is removed from your actual canvas. However, that is not the case, my friend. If I go over down to my console and then open up the instrument tab here, you can see that that Captain Chords, it's, the track is gone, the VST is turned off, so it's not taking any CPU power, but it's still there in your session. And if you don't want a cluttered session, you might actually want to remove the whole thing. So then if you wanted to remove everything, which you actually want to do, is go over to right click and then remove track and instrument. This will effectively remove everything. And to make it really easy for you, just so you don't get confused, that's what I've put down here on this little drop down menu. If you wanna remove a VST, simply click on that. Or if you wanna remove multiple, shift click and select a couple and then remove VST tracks. This essentially is the same thing as remove track and instrument. I've just put it here for you so it's easy to see. If I click on that, everything is gone. And if I go back over to my console, you can see that all those VSTs are also gone as well. Now, in the case that you want to remove both audio and VST tracks at the same time, then we need a way to combine both of these functions, right? Remove track and remove track and instrument. And that is super simple. What you want to do, of course, first is highlight or select the tracks that you want to remove. So I'm going to select this audio track here. I'm going to select this VST track. Let's do maybe these three here as well. From there, go over to remove. And then this time hit remove VST and audio tracks, and it's going to do just that. Okay, the last two buttons in this area are called duplicate without events and then duplicate with events. And the reason that I created these is because in Studio One, the one gripe that I had in the beginning, and maybe even now, is that if you ever wanted to duplicate a VST to maybe create... I don't know, maybe like a different pattern using the same preset or maybe even just the same VST, right? A lot of people, what a lot of people do is they go over to that VST, right click, and they think, oh yeah, I'm gonna hit duplicate track. 
that makes sense because it basically just gives you the same thing, right? It even says Serum 2 or VST2 or whatever. The problem though is that this is not a different instance of the VST. This is basically the same instance of that Serum in my case with a different track. And the problem is that if I were to go to this second Serum track and I were to change the preset, it would also change the preset of the previous track therefore messing up whatever I had programmed. And if you do this for a while without maybe knowing that you're doing it, you might find yourself 30 minutes later and realizing that you've lost that preset that you initially started out with. So then what you really want to be doing if you want to duplicate a track, a VST, is right click and duplicate track complete. This will essentially create a different instance of that VST. And you can see here as well, if I drop this down, this is a serum. But this here is a Serum 2. The last time we did this with just the duplicate track, it was that same instance of Serum. So this is what you want to do. Now this is great, but I took it to another level because a lot of times what will happen is maybe you want to duplicate a VST and keep the events. Maybe you want to layer something together. So you want to add an additional functionality to this duplicate function. And that is exactly what's happening up here with these two macros. If I press the duplicate with events, it'll basically just give me another instance of whatever I selected and keep the events from that previous event. Now, on the other hand, if you wanted to duplicate this VST but not keep any events from before, maybe you wanna program something different, then what you wanna do is hit duplicate without events, and this will effectively duplicate uh, that VST, give you another instance, a separate instance, but this time it is a blank slate for you to do whatever you need to do. All right, moving on, the next category here is called events, and here we only have three macros and they're super simple. The first one is called copy and paste, and as you might expect, if I select any MIDI events, audio events, whatever, and then head over to wherever I want to paste them, so let's say maybe at the start of this measure here, hit copy and paste, it basically does exactly as it advertises. Now the last two macros here are basically for people who use Impact XT and specifically use the Pattern Editor. Now the Pattern Editor in Studio One is basically its native step sequencer. And to use that, as mentioned, you will need Impact XT. But the thing is, if you load up an Impact XT and double click on the timeline to create a MIDI event, by default, it will open up either the drum view or the piano roll, and this is not what you want. Now, a lot of times I found myself confused trying to figure out where that insert pattern button was, and it's basically up here, right? You're gonna wanna go over to event, instrument parts, insert pattern, but that's a little bit too much of a menu digging uh, for me. So what I've done is I've put it here for you. All you basically do is select impact, insert pattern, and there you are. Now at this point, if you're someone like me, you might want to separate your drums to have further control, but if you want to use a pattern editor, it will require a few button clicks and menu digging to make the conversion happen. Now the manual way of doing this is to click on that event, go down to instrument parts, convert pattern to part, and then from here, right click again, instrument parts, and then explode pitches to tracks. This is a little bit too much for me though, so what I've done is I've put everything in one button, so now all you have to do is click on that pattern event, hit the separate pattern macro, and you're good to go. Now moving on, we have the effects section, and this to me is the meat and potatoes of this toolbar. This is my favorite section, because what it basically allows you to do is to add plugins from your timeline without having to go back and forth between the console. One of the problems that I've had over the years is that I am predominantly a one screen kind of guy. I do have this one, but I really only use it for like admin stuff and stuff like that. I don't really use it for production and mixing. So working off of one screen, you have limited real estate and it gets really annoying to have to open the mixer on and off again to add your plugins. Now what I've been doing over the past couple of years to circumvent this is that I've started to use the inspector window. So I don't even open up my mixer anymore. I basically just open up the inspector window. It goes on a track by track basis. From here, I can add my plugins and it does become a little bit faster if you have some favorites, so you can drop that menu down and add your plugins in this way. But even then, it is not as fast as I wanted it to be. But all of that is fixed with this new effects section on this toolbar. So if you take a look here, I have this section divided into a couple of subsections which relate to popular plugin uh, categories. So we have EQ, compression, delay, reverb, and saturation. And if I were to drop that down, we have a couple of different options which pertain to my favorite plugins under each of these categories. So for EQ, we have uh, the Pro Q3, the Pultec, and the Sooth 2. Compression, we have the Pro C2, LA2A, 1176. Delay, Echo Boy, Repeater, you get the idea. And to use this, it is as simple as selecting any track. Let's say I wanted to add an EQ to this expand, right? Boom, boom, 
there it is. Let's say that I wanted to add a little bit of delay, Echo Boy, boom, there it is. Let's say I wanted to add a little bit of saturation, you know, uh, sausage fattener, done. Now, like I said, this is my favorite part of this toolbar. And what I will say though, is that it does require a bit of work to set up, but you only have to set up once. And once you download this, you'll have instructional videos on how to do all of this. But this to me is my favorite section and I can't live without it. Okay, moving on, we have the last two sections here called miscellaneous and export. And they're basically for end of project tasks. So what'll happen is a lot of times I will you know, finish producing a track. Let me just duplicate this to show you really quickly. And let's say this is my entire arrangement. Well, I export from the end, start and end markers. And what this first one does is it sets that end marker based on where your last event happens. So as you saw here, it uh, created the start marker at the beginning of my project and the end marker exactly where my last event happens on my timeline. The next section here under the miscellaneous section is called name sections, and this is a drop down menu. And basically what happens here is I use the arrangement track a lot to basically just sculpt out my, my arrangement and my song, my beat. And what'll happen though is like, if you use it, it goes sequentially. So if, as you saw here, it just inserted an intro section, then it'll do verse, then it'll do chorus and so on and so forth. Now this is great, but what happens if this is not an intro? What if you're like me and you start with a chorus? Well, you could right click, double click, and then rename this to whatever you want, or you could simply click on that section, go over to name sections and pick something else and you're done. Now, the last two options here are for exporting. As I mentioned, the first one is called export stems. This basically is the export track outs option, right? If you wanted to export your entire production to send off to a mixing engineer, this is what you would use. This is basically exporting every single channel with all that you have going on. And that's great to have. The other option is called export song. And this one is for exporting your entire production or mix into a single wave or MP3 file. Now this is a basic export window for Studio One, but here of course you select your own options. And as I mentioned, I like to do between song start and end marker and then hit okay. So that my friends is the productivity toolbar. It is a free, macro toolbar for Studio One that I truly believe will help you get more done. The toolbar is totally free and to get it, all you have to do is click the first link down below. Now, if this is your first time hearing about macros and you want to dive deeper, I actually have another paid toolbar specifically for making beats faster in Studio One. So if you want to learn more about that, then click on this video right here. Thank you so much for your time and I'll see you on the next video.